Okay, in my previous video, we talked about how we can use Splunk table view and the custom cell renderer to render custom code in our in our Splunk table level, right? So we, we rendered something like movie posters in our table cell level, right? Now in this video, maybe maybe let me open that JS file first, maybe then we will discuss. So over there, what we did is we basically have a image URL and that particular image URL, we are basically rendering to our Splunk table, right? Using this custom cell renderer over there. Now, while doing that, I told you like this one, we hard coded over here, right? So if we just go back to the movie database API, now under getting started images, we have seen like how to construct the whole image URL or movie poster URL, right? So it has three parts. One is this base URL, right? Then we have the poster size. Then we have the backdrop path. We have it. So this part we have it in our in our event, right? Now in previous video, we just hard coded this stuff. Now to get this guys dynamically, specifically the first part and the second part, there is a API called configuration API. And and I told like, we, we, ju we had just asked coding in the previous video. Now this video, we will try to hit this particular API and get those details. So if you just do the try it out option over here and and give our API key over here, maybe let me, let me copy that API key from, from my code. Okay. So if I paste it over here and sending this request, so this give me a request response over here. If you see it with all the details, like what is the, what will be my base URL? What would be my secure base URL? Like it will start with HTTP and it will start with HTTPS. No, nothing else is different over here. Then it will give you the lit lot of backdrop sizes like W300, 780, 1280 something like this one even you can use original as well so for logo size poster size it will give you different different sizes over here right so we will try to use this particular response now to construct the full url okay so what we'll do first is we will first comment this guy okay so we will basically we will be using this we will be basically constructing this image url dynamically so that's why we will not be using this hard coded values anymore now okay now outside now this this part if you if you if you see it over here this part right so this part is will be always static right because this this base url and the movie size we will be will be going with a fixed movie size only okay the variable part is the cell dot value over here okay so that means that means we will still needs to define this image url variable inside this custom renderer only and the render render fun method over here okay only thing is that values will be coming from from the outside so let's say we will say base underscore url we will define one variable over there then we will have so the, till this point it will be my base url then we have a slash right so we will say slash over here then we will have poster size okay we will create these variables in future okay then we will have our old this one cell dot value because this will be always dynamic right because for for each and every cell so this will be different right okay now let us try to see how we can how we can get these guys over here so we will go outside of this custom cell renderer okay because we just need it once we, we need to execute this particular logic only once because for each and every movie this this base url and size will be same right now to access an api so this could be like splunk internal api any kind of api you if even if you define your own custom apis okay so the the method will be same we'll be using jquery ajax method over here so using jquery ajax call you can you can call any kind of api over here and the syntax is will be something like this one okay so it will be something like dollar dot a j a x ajax okay so this will be the ajax call now while doing the call you need to basically provide some informations over here 
in in key value kind of structure like json kind of structure so we will say this curly bracket start and end okay now we will say what will be my request type so it will be type will be equals to get over here my output data type data type will be data type will be json over here okay and and this is how we pass the input query parameter so in the in the data key okay so query parameter means like over here we pass the api key as 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 a query parameter over here right so the same stuff you will be passing it as a data over here in when you basically do the ajax call over here okay so we will do the same stuff as we did in the python code as well so we will say api underscore key api key the value will be our our api key value so i will just copy it from here okay so this is how we are passing the query parameter over here and if you are not sure about how ajax call happens just take look out the syntax in in in, in anywhere you will get in the in, in if you search in google over here okay this is very simple syntax over here okay now we have to provide the url as well the endpoint url so that will be this guy over here so this will be our url over here till the configuration right so we'll say url equals to this one and and when the ajax call will be success or failure then you can you can handle those events as well over here so as we'll be mainly bothering about the success events so we'll say success success okay and over here we can we can run a function over here because because the success one so when we will hit this particular url right and get the data in a json format so that data will be input of, of this particular function over here you can access this data something like as an input of this particular function over here so when you call a method in a success so the data will be passed as a part of that particular method then you can display it so let's say first we will console dot log we will just log this particular data initially okay so then we will see how how we can access the other stuff over here now to check it out what we'll do is we will do a bump over here then we will just refresh our tmdb js dashboard again okay now it will not be visible in the in the ui level okay it did not display anything over here let me see what's going on over here so it is saying reference error base url okay so what what happens like we have basically removed this image url over here and it, and we replaced with this this things over here and we still not initialized this stuff okay so that's why it is it is it is complaining about that one so this this should be fine once we once we have our own base url and poster poster size poster size defined but the main thing is like if you see it over here it has printed that object we basically access through the asynchronous javascript call over here right so whatever we did it over here so it is it has printed this particular data over here like right? now let us try to see first what it is printed now if you see it like whatever whenever we called that particular rest endpoint in our tmdb website right so it has given me a structure something like this one images then then these things right now the same information it has printed over here as well right images then the back different backdrop sizes base url secure base url and the different logo sizes poster sizes and other stuff right so that means we are able to call that rest api endpoint and get the data now it is just the matter of fact like we need to basically take that we will work with secure base url so that's why we will take this particular key value and in terms of size we will say let like backdrop size and then we will take let's say size the, the second element of this particular array over here okay so that should be sufficient enough for us to construct that url dynamically okay so what will be our base url so let us let us try to do that one so this is the variable we we thought like we will be creating it over here right so base url so it will be data then 
as as it is a json structure right so it has the images right so we will copy this one over here so we'll say data images then we will take the secure base url because this is the direct key under this images over here right so this will be my base url so we will define the base url over here base underscore url okay so equals to blank over here now this will become my base url and what will be becoming my poster size so this will be something like this one right so poster size will be data images anyway we have that is the images is the base key over here right now under images we need to go to backdrop sizes so we will have backdrop sizes and then we will take the second element of this array which is nothing but one over here right we we need w780 right so this two will become my base url and my poster size right so we will just comment out this one and and this two guys only we have used it over here as well so if everything goes fine we should be able to see those movie posters rendered in our at, the, at our table level okay so let us try to save it and then we will go bump it once then we'll go to our chase dashboard again and we will refresh it so it was not displaying because those variables was not initialized previously now it should be able to display it as well okay it's still not displaying let me see what is the error poster underscore size is not defined so let me try to see it. poster okay so the poster underscore size we have to define it over here poster size equals to blank again we have to bump it and then refresh this particular dashboard over here okay now if you see it is able to do it also in my previous video what whatever we have done it over here is like uh, i put it in this movie title under h2 but i also make the changes in my code and i think you remember if you see uh, seen it over there so i also make changes from h2 to h1 so that it will it will be in bigger size that's all that nothing nothing fancy over there okay so what we essentially did it over here is instead of hard coding the url we basically called a rest api endpoint over here if you see this configuration endpoint and got those url data and the poster size then dynamically generated this particular image url over here okay so that is essentially what we have done it now this kind of concept you can apply for any kind of endpoint you have either it says plunk endpoint or or if you have your custom own endpoints so or any external endpoint the same concept can be applied over there as well okay so hopefully this video is helpful see you in next video